Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I recently went on an 18 day trip to Antarctica and honestly, I overpacked. I brought a whole carry-on and a checked bag. And some people on the trip only brought a carry-on and it's totally possible. I wish I had known this before going. I overbought, over panicked, and honestly didn't need half the things I brought. I went on an 18 day cruise, so we really did it all. We went to the Falkland Islands and then South Georgia and then Antarctica back through the Drake's Passage, so we saw it all. The biggest thing about Antarctica is that weather changes within seconds. It could go from the most beautiful day you've ever seen to the coldest, scariest day ever, and it just happens with a blink of an eye. It's truly insane, but what makes that part of the world so interesting and so beautiful. So the biggest thing is layering. The boat that we went on, we could only go out for an hour max. So unless we were going out on land, um, we just wore what we wore and then didn't really like take off the layers. But if we went on land and went on hikes, layering was so important because sometimes you'd go through the water, be freezing, and then you get on land and go on a hike and just be sweating and then just go through the range of temperatures while you're out for the hour. I'll go through, I'll link everything at the bottom, everything that I bought, everything was on Amazon. I tried not to spend a lot of money and everything I bought absolutely did the job. I did not feel underprepared at all at any moment. And at the end, I'll tell you things that you definitely don't need. And as a disclaimer, the boat that we went on, and I think most boats do this, they give you a jacket to wear. Our jacket came with another layer. It was the warmest jacket I've ever worn. And then they also gave us a backpack with a water bottle. I didn't really need the backpack because we weren't out that long, but it was nice to have and obviously nice of them. So we'll start with the under layer. Um, I bought some thermal layers, just this top, that I wore under everything and with these thermal leggings. I bought one pair, it's all I needed. There was a washer and dryer on the ship, so I just washed this after a couple wears, but these were super affordable, so, and I know I saw some two packs on there. If you're going out a lot and don't feel like you're gonna do laundry, then this, then definitely buy more than one pair, but for me, just this one pair did the trick. I'd often sub in just other pairs of athletic leggings for the bottoms, but this top was such a staple to wear under this next layer, which was also a big one, was just like a fleece. This I'd always layer this with the fleece. Such a good base for anything I'd put on. When we were doing hikes, this would be perfect just to wear without the jacket, and then it was just perfect for wearing under the jacket. As for pants, I'd wear these and then get yourself a pair of good waterproof pants oh my god one day we went out i didn't wear these and i fully regretted it because you go out on the zodiacs and the water's splashing again the weather changes within seconds so we were out on the boat thought it was a beautiful day and then we were getting splashed on which is not the end of the world but this just makes things so much more comfortable so much much more worry free and then obviously the bottoms are Waterproofs, there's a layer under, and the boat usually gives you your own boots since everything has to pass by a security, so the boots fit perfectly under the pants. Okay, as for socks, I was wearing regular socks for the most part. I also brought these, these are Carhartt socks. These are wool socks, these were perfect for the days that we were actually on Antarctica and it was super snowy and icy and these did the trick. I also bought these ski socks. Actually didn't end up wearing these, but these have like a very soft lining inside and also did the job. But usually I just wore regular socks and the muck boots, I don't know. They just felt like they were insulated, but it wasn't a problem with having cold feet. All right. As for the gloves, I brought these ones. Um, I also had a pair of like chunky ski gloves, but these are the best option because you want something that you can use your phone while wearing. Obviously there's gonna be stuff that happens while you're out and you wanna just grab your phone and be able to use it. And when I had those other gloves on, the super insulated ones, I couldn't access my phone. Sometimes a whale would go by or some penguins and you know, you just wanna like whip out your phone and use it and that just prohibits you from doing that. These are the best case. I think sometimes when you're out for longer, my hands would get colder, but um, I never really felt uncomfortable. These, just a light pair of gloves, again, that you can use your phone through. That's so big because you don't wanna miss an amazing moment. This saved my life. This is so essential. I was, I'm from New England, so I was laughing that, you know, we're from Boston 
I don't need things like this. Like this is so ridiculous. But after being out there for one day when we were in Antarctica, I was like, thank God for this. Because if you're all bundled up and you're <laughs> just like your forehead is exposed, it ruins everything. And the wind is so strong down there that like if it's raining and it's windy, it just whips against your face and it's not the most pleasant experience. It's definitely tolerable, but this just makes it more enjoyable. It just was like nice to have your face covered. And then that leads me to glasses. Make sure you bring sunglasses. The white reflecting from the sun, the snow is so white. There's a hole in the ozone layer down in Antarctica. So you just don't want to expose your eyeballs to it. Someone on the ship was telling me that she was an expedition leader and she had gone down a week before and did, forgot to wear her sunglasses and then was just kind of seeing like spots for a couple days from it. So bring your sunglasses. I brought just a pair of like black shades, but also I would recommend just bringing like ski goggles because then if the water's hitting, you don't have to like keep cleaning them. And honestly, like you just don't know what is going to happen. So this plus ski goggles is like the ultimate, ultimate pairing. Hiking boots, definitely bring some sort of like lanyard or holder for your phone. I brought this little thing um, to, this goes in your phone case and then this attaches so that your phone is just hanging from your wrist. This was super helpful to not drop my phone in the ocean, but also have it on hand at all times. Also saw people with the plastic case um, lanyards with the plastic case around your neck. Also the iPhones these days, I didn't use this feature. It's not even a feature, but I just didn't think to use it. But you can just dunk your phone underwater. They're waterproof and get amazing footage of wildlife underwater a couple people that we were with did that i again completely forgot and i'm kicking myself because of it but if you have a waterproof case that might give you ease of mind to dunk your phone in the water because it does seem a little scary but totally worth it because the footage they got of the whales swimming underwater was absolutely unbelievable and again this is why i'm kicking myself and wish that i had done the same so this was super helpful one more thing to bring is binoculars. Make sure to double check if your ship provides it or not. We were lucky enough to have them in the room. I really didn't think I was gonna need them. And then after a couple days, I was like, oh, I get it. I get why everyone's using these because you can really get up close with the wildlife in it's just so nice to have when someone's trying to point something out or you're trying to like really look at something when you can't get too close to shore. Unfortunately, there were some sites that we weren't able to get on shore at because of bird flu, which was sad, but binoculars really helped to get really close into the action um, while we were so far away. So double check to see if your ship provides binoculars. If not, I highly recommend getting your own pair. Here are things you do not need to pack a big puffer jacket this was my biggest regret because i was lugging it around the airport and it was just so clunky and i didn't need it at all your cruise ship probably will provide you an outerwear and they know what's best they know the best kind of jacket the jacket they provided us was so amazing i can't wait to wear it again it like really protected me from the cold and i really regret lugging around my big down jacket that i didn't need the only time i did use it was in ushuaia we had five hours to kill before the cruise started and we went on a long walk around ushuaia that's the only time i used the jacket we didn't have to go on the walk and i just wish i had left the jacket behind what i did bring was a light puffer but the puffer was also built into our provided jackets from the cruise line so you may or may not need it but if you are to bring something bring a light puffer some light very light jacket I had it on while I was walking around the boat because you never know when there's gonna be an announcement that there's some wildlife outside that you need to run outside and take a look at or if there's a beautiful iceberg going by or any of that stuff. You just wanna have something on that you can run outside and check out what's going on without heading back to your room to get some outerwear on. So I also have a code for you um, so that if you want that jacket too, you can purchase it. It was absolutely perfect. I never felt too hot while I had it on while I was walking around the ship and it really protected me from the cold when I was outside. I didn't need a scarf. I packed one. Um, it honestly took up so much space. All the base layers that you have on and the fleece and the jacket should do the trick. The scarf is just a really clunky add-on and there's really no time that I felt like I needed to use it. I also brought a lot of footwear. I brought snow boots, hiking boots, and sneakers. The snow boots were unnecessary. The ship provides you muck boots and sometimes they're the only shoe wear that you can wear outside of the ship because of biosecurity. So there was never a need for snow boots. I brought them, they took up way too much space. I never used them, so leave those behind. And an umbrella, you really don't need that. There was some on our cruise ship, but there was never a time where we needed an umbrella, so leave that at home. One more thing that's not clothing, but do not forget to pack is your motion sickness relief medication. 
do not be like me who thought they were way too good to bring it, who thought that they are so immune to boats that they would never get seasick and who got seasick on the first day. I learned my lesson really quick and luckily my roommate had some to share. I really thought I wasn't gonna get seasick, but I guess everybody does, especially if you're gonna go through the Drake's Passage. It's not really the, so it was like a combination of the motion and also just the length of it. Like we were in the Drake's Passage for two days. It's a long time for your body to feel like you're on a roller coaster. So just bring it to have on standby. You don't want to be left alone without it. Um, it just makes it so much less fun. So those are my essential packing tips for Antarctica. I am so excited that you're going. It was such an amazing experience. You're going to have such a good time. Please let me know if you have any questions and like and subscribe. See you later.